Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can use the new Butterworth filter in the Curve Editor for more advanced motion smoothing. The Butterworth filter targets specific ranges and frequencies in your motion curve for more detailed refinement of small jitters or vibrations that can be present in motion capture data. To get started, we need to open up the Curve Editor and the Animation Layer panel, which use the F11 and F12 hotkeys respectively. You'll then want to unlock the base motion layer to begin editing your original motion data. Once you do, you'll see all of the curves of keyframes in the curve editor for the individual bones. You can visualize the motion in your viewport better by using the motion trail option. If you open the Edit Motion Layer tool, you can then right-click on any of the bones in the viewport to see the path that bone takes to the 3D environment. You can disable keyframe labels and plot tween frames for a less cluttered look. If we take a look at the position values for the z-axis of the hip bone in the Curve Editor, you can see that there is significant jagged bouncing in the curve which is what we want to avoid here. Hit the F key to frame that curve. With the traditional smooth filter, we can see that we have a single slider called smooth factor, which is essentially the smoothing strength. If we enable preview mode, we can see how this affects the curve at different values. Both small jitters and large peaks are smoothed out evenly, which smooths out the jagged hip bouncing, but also all of the energy of the original as a result of the lower position change values. In addition, we still have jittering in other areas. Let's try the same thing with the Butterworth filter next. You'll see here that we have cutoff and sampling rate parameters that we can adjust. Sampling rate is basically just your capture frame rate, however, the cutoff value allows us to target these jittery areas marked off with red squares. A higher cutoff value basically minimizes the effect of the Butterworth filter. A lower value will focus on higher frequency smoothing first, such as the peaks marked in the red squares. If we enable preview mode, you'll notice those areas targeted for smoothing. You can also notice the gradual increased smoothing of those specific areas as our cutoff value is decreased. So generally, you'll want to mess around with the value of this parameter first to find the best result for your unique case. If you marquee select a specific region to smooth out, the falloff slider will be enabled. This controls the time, in seconds, at both the front and back of the curve to apply a blending smooth effect to. If this value is too low, you may experience jagged distortions or kinks in the curve immediately before or after your selected range. The best practice here is simply to increase the falloff to a suitable value that gives you the result that you want. Again, the last thing you want to do is sap the energy from the motion, so be sure that you don't smooth out the curves too much with a falloff value that is too high. Finally, let's look at aligning to frame and sampling rate. The default sampling rate for the Butterworth filter is 60 frames per second. Coincidentally, our project is also set to a matching frame rate of 60 frames per second. However, if we lower this value, we can see that the filter does its best to maintain the curve shape while still reducing the number of keys. This is a commonly used technique called curve optimization, however keep in mind that reducing this value too much will again cause the curve to become distorted. The Align to Frames checkbox causes every key to snap to the closest frame. Notice, if I don't have this enabled, that some keys will show up between frames, which is not ideal. Generally, you'll want Align to Frames enabled, as keys that show up between frames can cause issues down the road, especially when importing or exporting to projects that have varying frame rates. That's it for this video guys, hopefully you find this filter useful in your mocap journey, and I'll see you in the next one.